Ladies and gentlemen, we live. What's up? With Cody of Hook Agency. That is I. Mike Stearns with Ascend Digital. I've got a question, Cody. So we were setting up this live, right? Because I'm like, a lot of great energy. Cody's fucking awesome. Let's talk about it. And I went to tag Cody, and I'm like, well, we've got to connect on Facebook. Cody doesn't have a Facebook. Not there. How come? Uh, really, it's a self-control thing. Whenever I hop on my phone, I see other piece, people posting stuff. It just worms its way into my mind. Uh, it starts releasing dopamine, and I just, I just don't like that. You know, I like okay. to be in control of the dopamine releases that are going on up there, and I, I don't have the self-control to, to say no. Know thyself. Life yeah. lessons brought to you today by Cody, the SEO expert at Hook Agency. That's I. So, do you? So you, you put the kibosh on any social media? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn because I think it's really good professionally and I like to be encouraged by what other people are posting. By and large, LinkedIn's a very positive environment. It's like, hey, I got this going on mm. and it's inspiring. But like Instagram, Facebook, even Twitter for the most part it just has a tendency to get negative and I, I don't like that going on in my mind all the time. I like that. So systematically eliminate the toxicity that yeah. takes place within those ecosystems and platforms. That's my play, yep. To maintain a positive state of mind. Yeah, I like to like put resistance between me and negativity. Like, obviously, I don't want to live in like a fairy tale land where everything is good. Uh -huh. But I want to have to be like, okay, this is a problem. Let's find out why it's a problem for myself, and not have other people tell me why it's a problem. Oh, that's a really good point. You're dropping a lot of nuggets here already, and we haven't even gotten into <laughs> what SEO is and the intricacies of it. Yeah. So, a timely transition. Yeah. What is SEO? Search engine optimization is all about showing up on Google where your customer is searching for your product or your service. So if you're in e-commerce, uh, it's like a toy or whatever product you're selling. Hey, buy new leggings, buy new compass, whatever. Or if you're buy a new spacesuit. Buy a new spacesuit. Like I guarantee you, somebody optimized a website to help you connect with that product. One hundred percent. It's happening behind the curtain a little bit, and the goal is just to make it as natural as possible. So. We operate on the local side of things, so it's a lot for us. It's a lot of hey, roofing near me in Minneapolis or Forest Lake, Minnesota, uh, and there's strategic ways that you can go about creating pages, posts to help your website show up and convert a customer when needed. So I find that there's um, some dis divisiveness within people that are doing SEO or SEO experts, and it's yeah. like some are from the school of thought or the camp, like hey, listen, it's all content, right? All you got to do is write content. Oh, yeah. Then you've got the guys that are like, fuck content. It's all links. Yep. Right? Where do you fall on that spectrum? If I were to answer your question as directly as I can, I lean more on the content side of things. But links are just as important. If you are publishing the best content in the world and no one is visiting your website, it's because Google doesn't trust you as an authority. Mm. Uh, and a way to earn Google's trust is get votes of confidence, links, from other websites in your industry. So a link from another roofing website or a home improvement blog that Google already trusts and know as an expert back to your blog, that's going to do leaps and bounds for accelerating your SEO. That's a really good point. So what you're saying is that these things can live together harmoniously and they're not mutually exclusive. Correct. Mm. Correct. Yeah. You know, it's like if you are only doing content with no links or you're only doing links with no content, you're going to have problems. Uh, you're going to either be stunting your growth or just telling Google, hey, look how cool I am, but there's nothing cool about you without the content. That's a really good point as well. And it's like, guys, whenever there's a spectrum, like it's usually not at the end of the spectrum that you want to be that's going to be Never. the most productive for your own mental health, your own production, your SEO, yeah. Google Ads, anything like that, right? It's you. The answer is usually somewhere in the middle. Yep. Um, and and to, to your point, right? So that's really interesting. Yeah, what, yeah. what should people write about, though? Like, roofing's yeah. not sexy. It's not fun. No, it's not. It's not sexy. It's not fun. But you know what? It's important. Mm. And when something's important, your customer knows it's important. So uh -huh. think about your homeowners. You know, what are the questions they're asking your sales reps? You know, how long is this roof replacement going to take? That's a wonderful blog post to write. Hey, what are my options in terms of colors or materials? Or should I consider going with the metal? What's the ROI on metal versus asphalt shingles? Uh, there's, there's literally infinite keywords that you could write about that your customers are going to be asking, and they already are asking your sales reps. And all you need to do is say, hey, noted, I'm going to create a piece of content to educate you on. Um, so to take that even one step further, SEO content, it, 
you can make it useful for other things. You know, you're not just writing for search engines. Like, they can be tools for your social media. If you're on social, publish that. It's going to be educational for your followers. And also, it can be tools for your sales reps. Hey, check out this blog post. We actually answer that right here. Here's the brief, but if you're curious, here's more. So. Ah, let the peak peak their, peak their interest. Yeah, yeah. Give them the opportunity to show more. That's really smart. So, I've seen people say, people aren't going to read your content. Google's going to read your content. Yeah. So just write it to, for Google to like it, right? Yeah. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, yes and no. You mm -hmm. do need to write your blog post so that Google will engage it and see, hey, this is exactly what this post is about. Essentially, Google just needs to understand what you're talking about. If you give it a very clear topic in the title, like how long does it take to replace a roof, for instance, and then every subheading, and you're answering that question or elaborating further on it in your headings, that's going to do wonders for helping Google understand it. But at the same time, Google can have perfect understanding about what you're talking about. But if people don't read it and stay on the page while engaging with it, for instance, I click on and I just see a fat wall of text, I'm getting the fuck out of there. Yeah, right. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to read a freaking college biography about how long a roof replacement takes. I want to see images. I want to see important things bulleted out for me. Video? That and video. Absolutely video. And all of that increases something called dwell time. And dwell time is just how long a user is spending on a page. And Google tracks that. And that actually increases your rank. If you're on the bottom of the first page, people are spending two, three minutes there reading and engaging. Google's like, oh my gosh, these people love this post. We're going to increase its rank. That makes sense because Google wants a good user experience. Reason being, the more people are using Google, right, and that audience they're retaining, the more they can charge you to run your ads, right? Supply and demand, it's pretty, it's pretty fundamental. Yeah. Um, so that makes a lot of sense as well. So then why wouldn't I, instead of writing content, dwell time's important, why don't I just log into my computer, hop on my website every single day, and fucking stay there for hours at a time? And write blog content? Not even write blog content. Oh, I'm just, just going to, well? yeah, I'm just going to have five people, myself and my employees, go to my website every yeah. day, hang out on the page seven, eight hours, yeah. And that should increase my authority to some degree, right? You know what? It will, but it, it you have to be interacting and engaging with it, so moving up and down. And it, at the end of the day, it's still only five users. We're looking to like scale that up, like mm. three, four, five hundred users in a month, thousands even. Uh, and that's where you're going to start to see that compounding benefit. The other thing is, is it needs to be from organic. So I need to Google it, and I, I've done this before. You know, you write a post, and you're like, all right, I'm Googling the keyword, and then I'm scrolling to the seventh <laughs> page of Google, clicking on it, and then scrolling and interacting with it. Because uh, Google needs to see it through their system, uh, not just like on your website. But yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So you had mentioned earlier, you kind of want to write content that your prospective customer, your target market, would gain to benefit in some capacity from. So. You'd mentioned like your sales reps. Yeah. They're getting questions. Yeah. Guys, this is a you thing. We're gonna talk about accountability. So like as a leader, whether you're delegating this to somebody else or it's you doing it personally, you have to help guide your sales reps in this yeah. instance to make sure that that content is making it from your customer's mouth into their ears and onto your blog, right? And whatever system or process that you want to have in order to make that happen, it's incumbent upon you to figure that out. Yep. And if you don't, that's a you thing, right? Yep. Um, so like, that's a really great note and point that you made because I think that it's underutilized. Yeah. And I tell guys all the time, it's like, if you might not be the best writer in the world and maybe you just hate sitting at a computer because it gives you a headache, yeah. use dictation. You know, you pull out your notepad on your phone, click into the oh, yeah. app, hit the microphone, and then talk through that type of content. And think of it as you were a sales rep at one point. Yep. And it's like, you know, what did people ask me? Is it too cold to put on a shingle? I mean, if you have that conversation with somebody at a bar, I'm pretty confident that you could speak very intelligently and for a, probably a really long time as far as Correct. what the pros and cons of, would be of doing that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So don't be intimidated by the fact that somebody's telling you to put pen to paper yep. because especially with technologies, there's really savvy ways to overcome yeah. that. Yeah, 100%. And I'd even go as far to say like SEO is really not hard. It's not rocket science. Yeah. You probably get pitches all the time. People be like, oh, this, this, and this about your website's broke. To be honest, you could figure that out and get it cleaned up in the matter of hours and do it yourself. What's hard about SEO is the consistency in doing it over time. Publishing blog content every single week over a period of a year. 
making sure that you're earning links, making sure that no links break on your website. It's, mm. it's not hard individually, but being consistent over the course of the year, even when life gets busy, that's where it gets tricky. And we're having an agency that can help you out is, is super valuable. That's great insight. And it's just like anything else, right? If, you, if, you're, going, if you're looking to lean out or bulk up, yeah. And you want, you need to hit the gym. Like you're gonna have to do that consistently. You're not gonna see that day three. Your no. shirt's not gonna fit better. Your biceps aren't gonna be bigger, yep. right? You're gonna have to put in the work, and you're gonna have to do so consistently. Yep. A lot of it's fundamentals. Yep. What do you find is the biggest falsehood that surrounds SEO as far as like people's perception of it? Yeah, I think time to results is a is a major falsehood, especially if you're spinning up a new website. If you buy a new domain. It's going to be at least at least one year before anything good is happening from an SEO standpoint on that website. Google doesn't even know your domain as an entity. Think of it if I'm Google and you're a new website, I have no reason to trust you. I have no reason to show you for for anything. Yeah. Uh, let alone a very competitive service where people are paying $15,000 for a roof for. Right. Google's aware of that and it only shows businesses that it knows are reputable and that it trusts for. Um, so, if you're looking for quick results on a new website, SEO I would strongly recommend doing it, uh, but that's not going to get you results fast. I would look towards like paid ads or some other uh, more immediate marketing asset for that. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking SEO, you're looking a year, year and a half down for ROI on your spend. Yeah, and and that's also another great point, and I think I would agree that that is definitely a misconception. Um, sometimes I think. You know, a lot of people see SEO talked about, it's sexy, like everyone's calling yeah, you yeah, about yeah. it, everyone's oh. talking about how great it is, but it's a really good point to say, like, it's definitely going to take time, and, and maybe the timing's not right, Yeah. or maybe you're an early company and you do acknowledge that it's going to take a year, year and a half, two years, depending on the market, yep. right? But it's also important to note that there's going to be companies out there that try to leverage your ignorance in that circumstance Correct. to take advantage of you. Yeah. So with that being said, there are going to be some things that are demonstrable in month two, in month three. Now, it might not be organic traffic. It's not going to be, damn sure it's likely not going to be leads. Yeah. But what are some things that people can look for yeah. that things are moving in the right direction and in yeah. 18 months, in 12 months, in nine more months that yeah. we're going to have some sort of result? That's a really, really good question. So. For us, things we say, hey, three months from now, we're looking for an increase in keywords, just the amount of information mm -hmm. Google is starting to show you for. Yep. Uh, an increase in referring domains, or just links going back to your website. Uh, we have charts that we're reporting on, you see the upward graph, and we say, hey, sweet, we're on track. This is what we expect mm -hmm. between months one and three. That bleeds into traffic. Traffic, we're talking three months, six months, that's where it's really starting to increase. And we're actually, hey, there's 30, 40, 50, 60% increase in organic traffic, visitors from search engines. Right. Uh, and then month six through nine, traffic really starts to take off, and that's when leads typically start coming in. Not in dramatic numbers, uh, but that's when we start to see actual increase in organic leads happening. And then months nine to 12 and beyond is really where we're talking, hey, these are organic leads. And then obviously when you have year over year, um, lead tracking, you're saying, hey, look, 25% increase in leads from organic. Right. That's that's where the money's at. So Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I'll say that one more thing that I'll add to that that we kind of take a look at, and it's kind of fucked up a little bit because I, I, in one breath I'll tell you, like, if somebody's trying to justify you that they're making you a ton of money by way of showing you impressions, likely you should run in the other directions. There's some instances where that's not the case, though. So if we're in month three, four of a campaign, we're going to look to impressions in Google Search Console to understand, yeah. hey, this is a precursor of yeah. things to come. Google's yep. starting to show us more for these yep. keywords. We can get in the conversation about how much oh, yeah. data Google withholds from us within Search Console, right? Because yeah. it'll say, like, okay, you got X amount of impressions, you showed this many times, got this many clicks, but then when you add the clicks up, it's not making, it doesn't check out. Yeah, it doesn't place. reconcile well. But um, impressions can be important very early on in an SEO campaign yeah. in conjunction with everything Cody said yeah. to really have a barometer and an idea that things are actually being done because, again, yeah. you'll have companies out there, it's going to take a year, it's going to take a year and a half, and they're not doing anything every step of the way. So when the time comes 12, 18, 24 months in, when you question it, it's like, okay, well, I just got fucked. I just lost. You lose a lot of money, but you also lose that time. That time can't be replaced. It's yep. a resource that we cannot replenish. It's time. So the money, you could earn more money, and it sucks, but for me, the time's the biggest thing. Yeah, the time's the real killer. So if you're getting started with an SEO agency, 
Make sure you have a very clear timeline to results and things that that agency is like benchmarking and yeah. watching and showing as leading indicators. Sometimes things take a little bit longer than the timeline I laid out before, and that's the way it goes. But what we're not doing is saying, oh, this sucks, it's taking longer. We're saying, oh, this sucks, this is what we think's going on. Yeah. Here's the leading indicators and why we're not concerned about this area. Here's what we're gonna do to address what we are concerned about. It's being held accountable every single month to the results and what's actually going on. So Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, yeah. Guys, if you're at RoofCon, I'm here with Cody Hook Agency. If you've got any more questions, stop by his booth, talk to him. Stop it. Talk to me. I'll be at the Ascend Digital Agency booth at 1353. What number are you here? We are 1607, I think. 1607 for 1353 for Ascend Digital Agency. Either one, I promise you, won't be a waste of time. You'll get a ton of value out of it. And, hey, maybe buy a website or some SEO. You never know. Um, we'll have beer, so you can come get some free beer. It'll be served until 2 p.m. We appreciate you guys joining. Cody, thanks Thank for your time, you. brother. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. We thanks go. everybody. That's what's up.